proper lighting and proper ventilation facilities are required it should be provided in the drawing room so that people who are residing they may feel comfort and they may not uh, they may not feel the uh, situation or condition of suffocation so this is one of the design which has plenty of open space and uh, facilities for air ventilation so all dimensions are in millimeter so you can see here this side lawn is provided grass waterway uh, grass walkway is provided this one is the sitting area and you can see three part of window is provided here as well as here as well as here so this will this both will provide a very good quality of air circulation or cross ventilation as well as light this one is race court this is bath and this one is kitchen unit so windows are provided in the bathroom as well as the kitchen unit so this type of design if we are constructing for the residential area for the residential building it is going to be a very eco-friendly environment friendly as well as a healthy environment will be maintained within the residential area as well as several the people who are staying in those area they will not never feel discomfort they will be happy to stay in that area so next one is we come to kitchen so the kitchen is preferably placed near the living room but away from the bedrooms it should be equipped with a sink and many built-in racks for the storage of utensils and supplies floor space of kitchens usually varies from 9.3 to 14 square meter store rooms and fuel storage space should be attached to the kitchen besides a large side chimney to carry out the smoke from the built-in cook stove the kitchen should have cross ventilation one of the windows and the door must directly open to the kitchen garden so it is very necessary one of the window and a door must directly open to the kitchen garden so that we can have access to the kitchen garden whatever vegetable we immediately we can fetch from there and we can prepare it or cook it so the kitchen must have an eastern location if possible so that during uh, morning time sun rays can provide adequate light as well as several other uh, things can be positive so availability of lpg in rural areas that have made considerable difference in the design and layout of kitchen in villages where gas stoves are not being used improved firewood chulas are being introduced so uh, we can see that kitchen is a very important place or very important room and it is required in every uh, residential building and the size floor space should be 9.3 to 14 square meter there are people who prefer bigger size of kitchens so that is their choice but minimum it should vary from 9.3 to 14 square meter that is sufficient for a kitchen unit then it is very necessary to have a storage space attached to the kitchen unit also there should be a chimney to carry out the smoke also there should be a window and door connected towards the kitchen garden and kitchen must be located in the eastern face or a window should be provided or open space should be provided from uh, towards eastern side so that in morning sun rays may enter in the kitchen unit or kitchen area um, like nowadays lpg cylinders are available at every place either it is rural or urban but still in such places where lpg cylinders are not available and improve varieties of firewood 
or we call it chulas are available and we can use that are connected with the chimneys and all so uh, in those type of uh, say like modern chulas there is no risk of getting uh, coming in contact with the smoke and all so this all facilities should be provided within the kitchen unit so next is toilet rooms so generally for indian families bathroom and lavatory should usually be separated in the bathroom provision should be made for both a shower and a direct tap bath if the water supply is not maintained throughout the day and night a small water reservoir may be a part of the bathroom a hanger for towels and a rack for soap etc are very useful for the lavatory a flush arrangement is essential next is a store room so a store room should be situated near to the kitchen for a small family store room of about 3 into 1.8 meter is sufficient it should be provided with rows racks and shelves on all the sides so that lot of things can be kept in the store room next is a guest room so guest room is a very important room and it should open only to the drawing room and front veranda and must have an independent across to the common toilet room unless a special toilet room is attached to it a common size of guest room is 3.6 into 3 meter next is we will discuss about doors and windows so double leaf doors and windows are usually preferred the doors used in the living and bedrooms should be 2.1 into 0.9 meter whereas those of the kitchen and bathrooms may be about 2 into 0.75 meter wooden door frames with only three pieces of 10.5 into 0.75 cm size each are preferred to steel frames the window dimensions generally preferred is 1.2 into 0.9 meter with double pan for it the bottom of the window is at 0.75 meter above the floor space so that the tops of all windows are at the same height as that of the doors the wooden frame is made of 10 into 7.5 cm cross section the doors and windows in many places in india are provided with wire mesh to keep the flies out of the room so next is farm fencing so fencing may be used to protect or divide property to improve its appearance to confine animals or to exclude or animals there are different type of fencing woven mesh type large mesh type closed mesh type hexagonal mesh type then barbed wire fencing plain wire fencing welded wire fencing and the last one is electrical fencing so large mesh type fencing large mesh type fences are more popular for general farm use than any other type properly galvanized such weather protected wires are particularly used for large animals cattle buffalo horses etc the space between the vertical wires is kept between 15 and 30 cm whereas the space between the horizontal wires vary between 7.5 and 22.5 cm the space between the horizontal wires is closer at the bottom and increased towards the top of the fence so we can see uh, from the picture it is very clear image that how a large mesh type of fencing is provided so these are generally provided for a uh, large size of animals or cattle either it is domestic animals or wild animals next one is close mesh type of fencing the close mesh type fence may be considered as an ideal fence for poultry houses rabbits and goat unit 
up to the first 43 centimeter height the spacing between the horizontal wire varies between 4 to 8 centimeters in this type of fencing the horizontal wires are made heavier than the vertical wires and the vertical wires are wrapped around the horizontal wires so from the first image we can see how a close close mesh type fencing looks like next one is hexag hexagonal mesh type fencing so hexagonal woven type wire are uniform all through their height so we can see from this image how an hexagonal mesh type fence looks like next one is barbed wire fencing so this type of fences are very commonly we can see uh, in the rural areas so barbed wire fences are made of two or more strands of smooth galvanized coated steel wire twisted together with two or four barbs spaced every four to five inches they are generally classified as either a standard or suspension barbed wire fence then standard barbed wire fences usually have three to five strands of barbed wire stretched between posts that are spaced between 15 to 25 feet apart so we can see from this image it is very clearly it can be understood that how a barbed wire fence looks alike very commonly uh, we can see in rural areas farmers are using this type of barbed wire for making boundary of their farm area next one is the suspension fence it has four to six strands of wire stretched taut so there is no more than three inches of back between posts depending upon the topography line posts are generally placed between 80 to 120 feet apart the wires are held apart by twisted wire taste paced 16 feet apart wind or animals hitting the fence cause it to sway back and forth this swaying motion keeps animals away from the fence and discourages them from fighting through it to allow the fence to sway the stays must not touch the ground or the effectiveness of the suspension fences will be reduced so next one is plain wire fencing so plain wire standard galvanized wire is suitable for most fences and has a single coating heavy galvanized wire with its thicker coating is more resistant to corrosion and should be considered in higher rainfall and coastal areas low tensile wire or soft wire is used in most conventional fences with close space posts thicker wire should be used in higher pressure situations high tensile wire has a higher breaking strain providing more strength to the fence and suitable for high pressure situations longer fence strains and wider post spacings high tensile requires more accurate straining and are more difficult to handle and not that soft wire so next is welded wire fencing this is similar to the ribbon but the horizontal and vertical wires are welded together to form a large as well as small mesh at different heights for particular purposes these wires are available in rolls of 100 meters having height varying from 1 to 1.5 meter this material is generally preferred for demarcating the boundary of a farm and works well with hedge so this type of boundary we can see at many places which is for defining the boundary of any two farm 
as well as many times we see that this type of boundary is uh, provided along with a hedge so the hedge and the boundary they both work together and it looks very pleasant also So next one is electrical fencing. So electrical fencing provides a number of benefits. It is effective in animal control and pressure management, cost effective, easily constructed and maintained, easily modified to suit requirements, lightweight and easy to construct, long lasting due to low physical contact from animal, leaning on fence. So how electrical fencing work? Electrical energy from an energizer is pulsed along a fence wire. When an animal touches the electrified wire, it completes the circuit, resulting in an electric shock to the animal. This shock is memorable so that the electric fence becomes more of a psychological barrier rather than a physical barrier. So this electric fence provides shock and that shock is memorable so that the electric fence becomes more of a psychological barrier rather than a physical barrier. So the animal if they come in contact once if they come in contact with this electrical wire and face the shock they will never return back to that place again. So it, it is something like a psychological barrier rather than a physical barrier so type of electrical fencing there are two type of electric fences permanent and portable unless a temporary or removable fence is required a permanent electric fence is recommended so permanent fences are economically easy to install and operate then portable fences are suitable for short-term animal control and rotational or cell grazing So next is dairy barns. An efficient management of cattle will be incomplete without a well-planned and adequate housing of cattle. Improve improper planning in the arrangement of animal housing may result in additional labor charges and thus curtail the profit of the owner. So dairy units are generally installed and generally constructed and developed and started for earning money mostly in rural areas that is a good source of income generation so whenever we are talking about designing of dairy barns it should be well planned it should provide adequate facilities for the cattle on the other hand if we do improper planning in the arrangement of animal housing it may result in additional labor charge and thus curtail the profit of the owner so the owner will go in loss and that dairy barn may be closed or that dairy unit may be closed. In several states, government is providing a huge subsidy on installation of dairy units. So most of the farmers in the greed of money which is provided through the subsidy by the government they avail the facility of subsidy facility or the loan facility they avail it but in most of the cases the, they don't have well planning so after one or two years they close their dairy unit and most of them they say that their unit was in loss but if we do if we go for proper planning at the initial stage that unit is never going to be in loss and it will yield lot of money and continuous uh, economic benefits owner can avail so there are few points which are to be considered like selection of site for dairy farm first one is topography of the soil second one is type of the soil exposure to the sun and protection from wind accessibility durability and attractiveness adequate water supply what about the surrounding area how is the surrounding area 
labor marketing and last one is availability of electricity few more points are there like connectivity to the road communication facilities etc so talking about type of dairy farms there are generally three type of dairy farms first one is stanchion barn so stanchion barn is one in which a cow is kept tied in separate stall and provided with feed externally each stall consists of a bedding place and feed place so that the cow can be always kept in the stall itself the cow has to never go outside the stall everything like resting as well as feeding both the activities can be completed at the same place or individual stall itself second one is loose housing barn with milking parlor and the third one is open air barn so stanchion barn in this barn the cows are housed and milk in the same building it is also called the general purpose barn or the cow house system of arrangement then individual feeding and management of animals are possible in stanchion type of barn for eight or more cows a two row barn with either face in or face out arrangement may be selected so individual feeding facility and management is possible in stanchion type of barn so if there are eight or more cows two row barn is should be constructed either facing in or facing out so for the both of the cases face in and face out there are some advantage as well as some disadvantage if it is face inside it is very easy to like it will reduce the labor charges like single time single unit of time will be required for feeding both side of the animals then a proper management can be done for collecting the waste generated from the animals so for both the cases there are some advantage the face out type of barn is preferred for milch animals this arrangement is important since most of the jobs are done from the rear of the animals and provides easy supervision each barns are commonly built 10 to 11 meter wide with sufficient length to accommodate all the animals next two pictures you can see one is face in and second one is face out so as i said that there are some advantage and disadvantages in both the cases like for the first one which is the face in face out type you can see like this uh, dung la is provided to collect all the dung and very easily we can collect and in a single unit of time whereas in face in type the feeding management can be done in minimum time so it has its own advantage and disadvantage so the manure alley can be eliminated in the face in type since the open space outside the barn can be used for this purpose this gives a saving of about 20% in floor area of barn as compared to the face out type face in type barns are usually preferred for bullocks and also for open shed type arrangement the maximum length of the barn should be restricted to 40 meter so that nearly 72 cows can be housed in one barn unit gutters are usually 45 cm wide and 50 cm deep a minimum slope of 2% should be provided so that the gutter may drain into a manure pit outside the barn so this image is of mangus which is the structure to feed the animals so from this image we can see how mangus are made and how it is used for feeding so you can see that these two sides this side the height of wall is more whereas this side it is less 
so this this side height is provided in order to minimize the wastage of the feed or fodder so man mangoes used in barns should have width ranging from 75 to 90 centimeter the back of the manger is about 60 centimeter above the floor so that cows may throw the fodder into the feed alley the length of the manger for individual cow is equal to the width of the stall and many demonstrated by a 12.5 centimeter height of wall then feed alley should be 1.2 meter wide and that is sufficient it is the passage between the outer wall and the manger along which a push cart full of silage may be moved so a push cart can be a mechanism for feeding the animals and it will require a minimum time so the height of the walls running along the barn length may be about 2.4 meter for gable roof the maximum height of the ceiling may vary between 5 and 5.5 meter for a barn 10 to 11 meter wide for adequate lighting in the barn 0.37 square meter of window area per cow is desirable so this is uh, one of the design uh, a half section that is dairy barn or face out type next is loose housing barn so very commonly in housing barns are used for rearing the cattle or especially for dairy so loose housing they require very less construction so less input cost is invested and animals are free to move and take the feed so it is very good for the farm it is economically beneficial for the owner or farmers as well as it is beneficial from health point of view it is beneficial for the animals also but on the another side in the case of diseases in loose housing type of barn or arrangement the management of animals is quite difficult like suppose one animal is infected by some kind of viral disease so as we know that in loose housing barn all animals are free to move here and there so there is some maximum chances of the viral disease to be expanding in all other animals so that can be one uh, disadvantage of loose housing barn but overall we can see that there, there is uh, maximum uh, benefit of loose housing barn either economically or uh, say like psychological behavior of the animals it is uh, good in this type of housing barns the yield or the milking capacity increases compared to a stanchion type of barn uh, why because animals are not tight at a single place but they are free to roam here and there within the given area so it permits the animals to move about freely and allows simple and economical construction of the feeding and shelter places so very simple and small construction area is required or small unit of construction is required only for feeding and for shelter so that is why it is it can be said that this is going to be economically beneficial then the area required per cow depends upon the climate whether an inside or outside feeding arrangement is used size of the cow and average production of the herd a high producing cow needs 
more feed more water and also more space so this is very important point a high producing cow needs more feed more water and also more space so as i was saying that there is a disadvantage in the loose housing type of barn that once a uh, animal is infected with some kind of viral disease there is a much more chances of spreading of that disease because that infected animal is free to walk here and there within the uh, barn similarly we should also think about as we know that the cow or animal who is producing more they require more feed compared to the animals who are uh, producing less so in the case of loose housing barn individual management of individual animal is not possible because suppose you are feeding a single animal who is uh, producing more if you are feeding it more all at, as we know that all animals are free to roam so some other animal who is not producing that much will come and they can consume that feed items or fodder so this is one of the limitation in loose housing barn that individual management of individual animal is not possible so there should be proper arrangement even if we are going for loose housing barn a small space should be provided separately for the infected animals as well as high producing animal so we can give or monitor and maintain and manage them individually as per their requirement so the floor space both for loafing as well as for feeding may be required in the order of 9 to 11 square meter per cow so feeding may be required a floor space may be required in order of 9 to 11 square meter per cow and the feed manger space may be between 70 and 75 cm wide for each animal or for each cow next one is milking parlor so the milking parlor or milking room is area where the cows are milked but not housed so this milking parlor is utilized only for milking of the animal they are not used for housing purpose or for feeding purpose so this should be remember that milking parlor is only used for milking the animals specifically not for housing and feeding the animal so this type of milking parlor is required uh, especially for those uh, farms where milking is done at the same time and by uh, machines especially milking machines if we are going for a manual milking there is no requirement of milking parlor during the uh, while animal uh, being on feeding um, the owner can go and milk manually to the animal so generally in this case owner has to uh, go to each and every animals for milking them individually one by one after but in case of uh, when the owner is using milking machine the animal has to be brought to the a uh, specific place and from there only milking activity can be done using milking machine so it is an essential part of the loose housing barn but may also be used with a stanchion or stall barn the most convenient milking room in common use is known as the tandem with either single or two string stall arrangement so this stall arrangement depends on the number of animals if more number of animal two strings are provided if less number of animal one string is provided so it is the most convenient milking room in common use is known as the tandem so tandem is a very important term you should remember always what is tandem so the ta tandem is the most convenient milking room in common use either single or two string stall arrangement the herringbone milking parlor is also widely used very commonly the herringbone 
milking type of parlor is used. Next one is open air barn. So in case of open air barn, it is fully open and it does not have any cover. The cows live in fields and they are fed and milk there itself. This system is also known as the loafing barn system and is not common on a well established dairy. So we can see in rural areas, even today also, even if we talk about present situation, the herds of animals are for entire year they stay in open place. During daytime, they they are taken to the pasture land and in the night they come back near to the house and in the open field they stay for entire night. So this arrangement is very economical and it is a traditional method of livestock rearing especially cattle, cows, especially for cows not for buffaloes. In some places the similar thing is done for buffaloes also. So this is very economical, very cheap. No construction, not at all construction is required. So very less investment. Only investment has to be done on, on the animals, purchasing of animals only. So as we know that it does not have any cover, it does not have any boundary, it does not have any manger, it does not have any fodder or feeding items. So nothing has to be purchased. Only the animal is kept in the open field. During daytime, the owner takes those animals to the pasture land and tied they they are on the grazing activities and during evening or night they return back to their home place and stay in the open field itself so uh, these are the different type of uh, dairy unit or barns which are commonly used uh, in indian scenario as well as globally Improved farmhouse design. Whenever we talk about any farmhouse or whenever we come across any farmhouse, we see that in general or very commonly, the design of the farmhouse are very fantastic. It looks pleasant, it looks beautiful. At the same time, it also provides comfort and basic amenities. So, why it is required? Because farmhouse is not only used for uh, cultivation of crops, but very often the, it is used also used for relaxing, enjoyment, family gatherings etc. That's why we talk about improved farmhouse design. So a farmhouse should be designed to provide maximum utility and comfort. So it should be designed in such a way that it should provide maximum utility and comfort for the people who are going to reside in that area. Also, it should be designed in such a way that each and every activity like individual activity should or process should contribute towards this second activity. It shouldn't be in such a way that one activity is damaging some activities of second process like say like uh, within the farmhouse we have dairy unit we have poultry we have goat tree we have fishing you fisheries unit as well as many more components can be added within the farmhouse also within the farmhouse we have farmstead area which consists of residential area too so 
the design of farmhouse should be in such a way that neither the crop cultivation should hamper some activities of livestock rearing nor the activities of live um, livestock rearing should hamper the activities of crop cultivation neither these two activities should hamper the uh, comfort level of the people who are residing in the farmstead or the residential building also it should be designed in such a way that being in the residential area the owner should have access to visualize to monitor each and every activities being in, at their residence area itself therefore we talk about house design or farmhouse design that should be improved on so a farmhouse should be designed to provide maximum utility and comfort the various rooms should be so located as to provide adequate comfort and minimum time and energy wastage in going from one to the other so we should uh, we should consider three or four points that farmhouse should be designed in such a way that it should provide maximum utility and comfort for the residents also the various rooms should be located or it should be designed and constructed in such a way that minimum time and energy must be utilized for going from one room to another room or from one place to another place so easy access should be there to all the rooms and all the components so that is we talk in the improved design of farm houses so talking about bedroom a typical bedroom of 3.6 into 3 meter will accommodate two single beds of 1 into 2 meter cross ventilation with one side exposed to the prevailing breeze is a desirable feature in design every bedroom should be provided with attached toilet facilities or should have an independent access to the common toilet room some storage space is also essential in every bedroom because the residents or the people who are going to stay in that area in that bedroom very commonly they have their own personal belongings and which has to be stored or which has to be or proper space for uh, keeping or storage storing that all item should be provided in each and every bedroom additionally there should be proper arrangement of ventilation and cross ventilation so in each and every room especially in bedroom and drawing rooms cross ventilation is must if there is no proper cross ventilation it is going to be the atmosphere is going to be uh, say like dizzy or very un uncomfortable for the people who are going to stay in that room so therefore we talk about whenever we talk about a bedroom there is a typical size smaller than that size size we should not construct the bedroom for accommodating two people or two beds and we also talk about the cross ventilation that cross ventilation is must in every bedroom so this can be one of the design of the bedrooms and several other rooms like we can see <coughs> the entry is from here this part is veranda consisting of 3.9 meter into 1.90 meter then there is a entry first entry towards the bedroom and the size of the bedroom is 4.0 into 2.8 meter second entry is in the living room then from the living room there is entry to the dining veranda or the dining space similar kind of space or opening is attachment is given from the bedroom or access is given from the bedroom to the dining veranda so the people staying here as well as here can 
have access direct access to the dining area similarly you can see like this bedroom is attached with a storeroom also also there is a passage or opening bathroom is here and then this one is the kitchen area so by this design some calculations are also given like main block is 12.8 into 4.6 meter that is 59 square meter then the uh, side is 6.7 into 3 meter that is 20 square meter and all total it is 79 square meter then deduction 1 into 2.1 meter that is 2 approx 2 square meter so when we subtract from 7 uh, 2 square meter from 79 square meter it is going to be 77 square meter so 77 square kilometer uh, 77 square meter of area constructed or design is for 77 square meter so we can see that this uh, this design is very comfortable it is very uh, like uh, it will this type of design if we have in the farmhouse for the residential area for residential building it is going to provide the maximum comfort as well as you can see that there is opening over here where on the there is passage and opening over here the toilet facility is provided at the end so uh, this is a very good kind of design and from the both side there is opening so cross ventilation will be proper in this type of design next is the drawing room so drawing room as we know that uh, it is for social gathering recreation for the guests who are visiting we take them to the drawing room rather than taking them to the bedroom or to the dining area so the drawing room generally serves as the room for recreation and social gathering the minimum size of the drawing room is 4.5 into 3.6 meter the minimum size of the drawing room that should be 4.5 into 3.6 meter but some people prefer to have one large drawing room of about 6 into 4.5 meter to serve as the drawing come dining room so uh, there are people who wish or they prefer to have a bigger area of drawing room so combinedly they can use that drawing room for uh, social gathering recreation purpose or for visiting of the guest as well as uh, dining room or dining facilities are also provided within that drawing room itself so that depends on the choice of the owner that what size of drawing room he or she requires to be constructed so the drawing room is best suited to be on one side of the house and should generally open into the front porch kitchen and one side should be the bedroom so remember this the drawing room is best suited to be on one side of the house and should generally open into the front porch kitchen and bedroom then wall spacing in the drawing room should have plenty of provision for natural light and ventilation so the wall space in the drawing room should have plenty of provisions for natural light and ventilation earlier also i have discussed that uh, the residential building should have proper cross ventilation facilities as well as natural light so uh, it has advantage when whenever there will be uh, in such room where there will be proper ventilation and flow of air circulation of air a uh, less uh, say like fan or ac facilities will be required 